It's my great pleasure to introduce Penka Georgieva from uh, France, and she will tell us about real Gromovitan theory. Please go ahead, Penka. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would also like to thank the organizers. It is a real pleasure to uh, give a talk at this event. I will speak about uh, real Gromovitan theory, and in particular uh, about my joint work with Eleni Yoneo and uh, Alexei Zinger. Uh, so I will begin uh, with uh, the, uh, uh, a bit from afar, uh, just a general introduction to uh, the more classical uh, uh, Gromovitan theory. Uh, so we will begin with uh, uh, the definition of a symplectic manifold. This is just a smooth manifold with um, closed on the general two form. They were studied by Arnold as the generalization of a phase space. And examples include uh, the co cotangent bundles, uh, of course, and uh, Keller manifold, uh, manifolds in particular. So on these manifolds, uh, there is always an infinite dimensional family of uh, what we call almost complex structures. So these are just automorphisms of the, co of the tangent bundle that squares to minus the identity. And uh, given uh, such uh, uh, almost com complex structure, uh, one can uh, look at uh, uh, what we call pseudo-homomorphic map. So these are just maps from a Riemann surface to the symplectic manifold, which satisfy uh, a pseudo-homomorphic uh, map uh, equation. Uh, in here, I'm sorry, I need to turn on my pen. So, no. Uh, these, uh, the reason why uh, we study uh, these uh, pseudo-homorphic maps uh, is because they uh, give uh, the uh, most symplectic invariants arise in one way or another using these maps. Uh, in particular, if we uh, look at uh, a genus uh, G Riemann surface and uh, we fix the homology class, we obtain one number which is invariant uh, and uh, we call this number a Gromovitan invariant. When we uh, combine all these invariants, they will uh, form a generating function that uh, uh, we also call uh, Gromovitan potential. And uh, this Gr Gromovitan potential is uh, uh, takes part in a much larger picture that uh, uh, is just one side uh, of. Um, uh, uh, of many dualities that uh, arise in, uh, from string theory. Uh, they, uh, on the symplectic side, we have the Gromovitan theory, and uh, this Gromovitan potential is uh, related to uh, uh, polynomials, um, uh, to not invariants, uh, to mirror symmetry, uh, and to integrable systems. So, uh, a little bit uh, uh, more. Um, uh, in, in detail, uh, we, uh, to, to introduce these invariants, we begin uh, with uh, the moduli space of uh, uh, stable marked pseudo-homorphic maps. So these will be uh, uh, maps uh, as before from a Riemann surface. Uh, we can also mark uh, some points on this Riemann surface. We are going to fix the homology class of the uh, image and uh, we will uh, ask them to be pseudo-homorphic to satisfy this uh, pseudo-homorphic equation. Uh, so then they, they will form a space, which is, um, uh, which is the, the moduli space uh, and uh, which can be compactified. It is compactified by uh, including maps from uh, domains uh, that have uh, some nodes. Uh, this, uh, this was introduced by Gromov uh, uh, while, uh, in 85, and uh, we can uh, consider uh, maps from these uh, moduli spaces into X, that are the evaluation maps, and integrate uh, 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 closed um, forms that are pullback uh, using uh, these uh, evaluation maps, and this will be the Gromovitan invariants. And I, I am having trouble here. So uh, for every choice of um, a genus and uh, for the Riemann surface and the homology class in the manifold and uh, of the constraints, we obtain a number in this integral. 
and we combine these numbers into generated series. They will be form of our series uh, in form of variables that keep track of the genus, the homology class of the map, and the cohomology classes of the constraints. Uh, examples of these generating functions uh, include, uh, in the case of a Calabial trifold, uh, then the dimension of the modular space is actually uh, zero. And we don't need to integrate any constraints. We will just count the, uh, the maps. Uh, then we keep uh, track of the homology class and the Euler characteristic of the domain. Uh, and uh, we form the gram witten generated series. It is often very useful to consider the exponential of uh, this uh, uh, generating function. And uh, this really corresponds to uh, considering maps that uh, uh, have uh, disconnected domains. Uh, they, are, they are better behave when we uh, consider uh, de de uh, degenerating uh, the, uh, the target manifold and considering symplectic sum formulas. Another example of a generating function is uh, just uh, in the case of, uh, say, a projective uh, space and uh, the projective plane in genus zero. We can consider generating series of uh, counts of uh, degree uh, d curves that pass through three d minus one points. And uh, I, have, uh, I have listed the numbers that one uh, obtain uh, when we count these maps. And in fact, uh, there is uh, a recursive formula uh, for these numbers that was uh, obtained uh, by Kansevich and uh, it uh, solved uh, very long standing uh, question in enumerative geometry uh, about these uh, discounts. And uh, now uh, we I will transition into um, the uh, real enumerative geometry. So, a typical question in enumerative geometry is uh, uh, for example, how many rational qubits pass through eight uh, points? And uh, the answer in, uh, is 12 in the case uh, we consider the complex numbers, uh, but in the case we consider the real numbers, uh, then uh, the number actually depends on the position of the constraints. Uh, so we will see eight, 10 or 12 solutions. Uh, another uh, pa uh, parallel is uh, if we have a degree D polynomial, uh, uh, then if we consider the number of roots over the complex numbers, it is always uh, the, the degree of the polynomial. Whereas if we uh, try to find the real uh, roots, that number will depend uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the coefficients. And so uh, this is uh, the general uh, behavior uh, of, of the real case. Uh, we can only expect to obtain an invariant that is that gives a lower bound of the actual solution solutions and this invariant number uh, it must count these solutions with a sign. So the first invariant count uh, was uh, obtained by Belchonger in two thousand and three in genus zero and uh, for a simplex manifolds of dimension uh, four and six, and uh, uh, here I listed the numbers that are obtained in the real case. And uh, as we see, they are much uh, lower than uh, the ones uh, obtained in the complex case, but they, they are still non-zero, non-trivial numbers. The uh, modular space perspective of these questions, uh, it uh, begins with a symplectic manifold uh, on which uh, uh, we, uh, uh, there is an involution, an anti-symplectic involution, that means that it pulls back uh, the symplectic form in, into minus itself. And the uh, basic example is the projective space with uh, the standard conjugation. So what we are interested in is uh, uh, the, the maps which are invariant under uh, this uh, uh, conjugation, uh, this involution. So they will form uh, the real modular space. And uh, this real modular space naturally uh, comes uh, as a union where the involution on the domain is, uh, uh, is fixed. So each component 
uh, is again, we again consider uh, maps uh, that has fixed homology class satisfy a J-homorphic equation, but are now equivalent with respect to involution on the target in involution on the domain. And uh, the compactification of these moduli spaces is obtained by including maps from symmetric nodal domains. And this really is the difference from uh, with uh, the complex case where uh, the nodal domains, what they will represent uh, will be strata of co-dimension two. And so the, the, in the complex case, the moduli space themselves will not have boundary, uh, not have co-dimension one boundary. Whereas in the real case, the symmetry uh, means that we will have co-dimension one boundary. And uh, if we only consider these spaces where the involution is fixed on the domain, uh, then they, when we integrate over them, because they have boundary, the integral will in fact depend on the choice of representatives of cohomology classes and of choice of uh, complex structure, uh, et, et cetera. So there are four types of uh, codimension one strata that will appear uh, either as boundary of the real module uh, spaces where the involutions are fixed, or uh, in this last case here, uh, they will be in fact uh, uh, a hyperplane inside them. So uh, the, the module space, as I said, when the involution is fixed, they, they will have boundary. And, but when we consider the union over all topological types of involutions of the domain, we obtain this bigger space, uh, which does not have boundary. And here I, I depicted the, the transition. If we start with uh, one involution in genus zero, uh, the boundary of this moduli space uh, comes from uh, maps uh, with not all domains of this form. And it is shared uh, with the boundary of the moduli space where the involution is, uh, uh, doesn't have a fixed locus on the domain. So there are only two types of these involutions and they have this common boundary uh, drawn in here. In genus one, the situation is uh, more complicated. We have three types of involutions on the domain and uh, they, uh, the boundaries of the first one uh, matches two of the boundaries of the second involution and the third boundary is matched by the boundary of the uh, moduli space corresponding to the third involution in genus zero. And so this, uh, this union that we obtain, uh, we form an object that does not have boundary. And uh, so then integration will give us uh, invariant numbers if uh, these moduli spaces are in fact orientable. And uh, what is uh, known is that they're even in genus zero, they're not always orientable. And it was a question, uh, can we find uh, at least uh, uh, sufficient conditions which will uh, uh, be uh, sufficient condition for the orientability of uh, this uh, big module space and in this way obtain uh, what uh, we would call a real gromov with invariance. So this question, uh, it is studied really in two parts. Uh, the first part is uh, giving orientation on the moduli spaces uh, with each part, uh, fixed uh, uh, involution. And then study uh, what happens uh, when we cross these boundaries. And it is uh, for this uh, reason, uh, it is very important to understand uh, the types of uh, co-dimension one strata. And indeed what happens is that the behavior of these uh, orientability questions is very similar uh, for uh, the elliptic and the hyperbolic type one. Uh, uh, they behave similarly in uh, uh, hyperbolic two and three, they behave differently. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, one, we, what we obtained with uh, Alexei Zinger are sufficient conditions uh, uh, that we impose on the manifold X, uh, so that uh, it will guarantee that all moduli spaces uh, for every genus and for uh, every homology class that we fix uh, is orientable. 
And uh, as a consequence, we obtain uh, the uh, real gram of invariants. They are defined as integrals uh, as before and are independent of the uh, almost complex structure and uh, representatives uh, of the uh, cohomology classes that we choose. Uh, they, the, these uh, conditions, uh, they are uh, in particular satisfy for uh, odd uh, dimensional projective spaces, many complete intersections, and uh, very importantly, uh, in the Calabial case. Uh, so they, they now give us a full theory. We also have the descendant invariants, and uh, uh, we can uh, uh, study. Um, the structure of these invariants. So uh, one basic question when we define uh, invariants is, of course, uh, their non-triviality. And uh, so th there is the question of uh, how, how we compute them. And uh, in uh, dimension two and three, th there are uh, many different methods uh, developed for the computation, in particular using tropical methods by Brugali, Michalkin, Ittenberg, uh, Haruamo, and Shustin, and also um, recursive formulas by Solomon, Tukuczynski, and Chen. Uh, together with uh, Alexei Zinger, we um, obtained a recursive formula that is similar to the um, uh, formula obtained by Kansevich, it relies on the relation uh, found in the daily Manford moduli space, and in particular, it gives us uh, uh, a way to compute numbers in the final cases. Uh, the formula that I've written here is for uh, the uh, projective tree space, and uh, it demonstrates that uh, all degree, D, all, all odd degree invariants in this case are non trivial, uh, whereas all even degree invariants are in fact zero. Uh, in higher genus, uh, the methods for computations are uh, uh, much less developed. Uh, there, one uh, relies on uh, uh, using uh, localization methods. And uh, using these, uh, uh, Jigen Neo and Alexei Zinger, they computed uh, uh, invariants uh, for uh, the CP3 in uh, uh, degree up to eight and genus up to five. And uh, uh, they found a formula relating them to actual enumerative counts because the gram of Whitney variants in higher genus, they are not really enumerative. They, they uh, contain more information. But uh, in the final threefold cases, there are enumerative invariants and a formula that relates the two allows, uh, allowed Jing uh, Chen and Alexei to actually find the enumerative counts depicted in, in this table. And uh, again, one sees that uh, uh, they, they are non-trivial and they come with signs as expected. Uh, so as in the complex case, uh, the, these uh, real invariants, they, uh, they are one side of a, of a bigger picture. Uh, and uh, they, they are relay, uh, related to, uh, to, as in the complex case, to not theory, to uh, a version of uh, mirror symmetry and to integrable systems. And these relations come from uh, uh, string theory. And in particular, there is an intrinsic symmetry that, uh, that uh, is the reason why we have these cor correspondences in the real cases as well. This intrinsic uh, uh, symmetry in the symplectic case translates into uh, anti-symplectic involution, uh, and uh, it has a different depiction uh, in uh, the different uh, 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 dual pictures that, that we uh, consider. Uh, to study these relations, we uh, what is important is to understand a structure that these uh, invariants uh, uh, satisfy. They it is not a structure that is associated to one number. It is uh, the structure that is associated to the combination to the generating series that that we uh, that we have. And uh, uh, one such structure uh, we obtained with uh, Ellen Yonel by studying uh, what we call a local theory. So this was uh, first uh, 
studied in the complexes uh, uh, by Brian and Todd Haripandi. Uh, so the local theory, it is associated uh, with uh, 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 the case where we consider uh, the total space of a bundle, uh, which is uh, a bundle over a genus G symmetric surface. Uh, and uh, we take a complex line bundle over it and we pull back the uh, uh, conjugate of this line bundle to consider the uh, this six dimensional uh, symplectic manifold. So the reason why we are interested in this local theory is because this in fact gives uh, a model for the neighborhood of a J-homorphic curve inside the Calabial trifold. And uh, if we understand the gromov witten theory of this uh, neighborhood, uh, then uh, in the structure that these numbers uh, have inside this neighborhood, then uh, we will be able to uh, uh, obtain the such a structure for the whole manifold as well. That that is the, the kind of uh, uh, reason and, and motivation that, that one has to to look at uh, these um, uh, local theory uh, questions. So what is important uh, for uh, for this uh, case is that uh, not only the modular spaces that we consider are oriented, but they also have canonical orientation. And that is, uh, that is also something that is quite different in the real case than in the complex case, where in the complex case, there is always a canonical orientation. Uh, here, it is quite difficult to, to find canonical orientations. And when we consider the generating series, uh, if we don't have that, uh, we uh, the, the slightest modification of one number can break the structure that we are looking for. Uh, so we, uh, uh, what uh, here I will denote uh, RGW, the generating series for the connected real uh, gram with the invariants and with RZ, uh, it will be the exponential. This corresponds to count uh, to, uh, uh, to the counting the disconnected domain case. And the reason why we like the disconnected generating function is because it behaves uh, much better uh, under the generation of the target. So the disconnected uh, generating function, it satisfies a splitting formula. Uh, so the splitting formula, uh, the picture is here. Uh, that uh, what we can do is we can split our uh, target curve uh, uh, using two uh, invariant circles, and uh, that surface will split into two separate ones. And uh, Gromov-Witten, the disconnected uh, Gromov-Witten invariants uh, of uh, uh, this. Um, uh, target space will, can then be computed using uh, the Gromov-Witten invariants of uh, these two pieces. So uh, this, uh, this allows us to compute, but uh, what is more important is that whenever we are in this situation and we have such a splitting formula, we in fact have uh, uh, a structure of uh, uh, topological quantum field theory. And uh, when this uh, TQFT is semi-simple, we can in fact give a nice closed formula uh, of uh, these invariants. Uh, even though this method will allow us to compute, it is not uh, as efficient as uh, uh, what the structure of a topological quantum field theory will give us. So in order to speak about uh, the TGFT, I need to uh, introduce um, the uh, cobordism categories that are involved here. Uh, so we will consider two-dimensional cobordism categories. So, so the objects will be the joint union. In the classical case uh, is uh, the oriented case. The objects are the joint unions of oriented circles and the morphisms are oriented surface with boundaries. What we are interested in is uh, what uh, 
uh, will be the unoriented category or the uh, Klein cobordism in the case that stands for, stands for Klein. So it is the same category, but we forget orientations and orientability everywhere. So the objects are again the joint unions of circles, uh, but the morphisms are now uh, surfaces with boundary which are not uh, oriented, not necessarily orientable as well. Uh, the oriented category is a subcategory of the unoriented one, uh, where we simply consider the, these oriented cobordisms. The generators of the oriented category are the uh, the cup, the cup, the tube, uh, the twist, and the two pairs of pants. And when we consider this uh, new object, then there are two new generators. One is the cross cup of a Mjombios band, and the other is called the involution. So the involution and the tube, they, they look very similar, but what is different is that uh, uh, there is a certain compatibility of the boundary orientations uh, for the tube, uh, which uh, does not hold for the involution. Uh, useful perspective, uh, and uh, this is how we are going to make a link with the real ground of written theory is to consider the orientation double cover uh, of both the objects and the morphisms. And this is what I will call the symmetrical volism category. Uh, so the objects now are disjoints, disjoint unions of pairs of circles, uh, and they come uh, so uh, per circle. It has a fixed orientation and the other circle has the opposite orientation and an evolution that is just identity uh, between them. And then the morphisms are oriented surfaces, this time oriented uh, with boundary, uh, which are equipped with an orientation reversing evolution covering uh, the one on the boundary. And this evolution uh, has no fixed points. So this symmetric category is equivalent to the uh, unoriented ca uh, category. The generators, uh, uh, so what comes for, from the oriented case, uh, and when we consider the orientation double cover, we will see uh, just uh, 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 the double of the, of the objects. They, they are the, the, the two uh, uh, pieces of the same thing. And uh, the involution is uh, really just the identity. Uh, but these new uh, objects, the cross cup and the evolution, they are in fact connected. And here we will, uh, the cross cup will correspond to uh, a P1 uh, with an involution without fixed locus and two disks removed. And the uh, involution uh, in fact exchanges the two copies of, uh, the, uh, of the circles in, in, uh, in an object. And this is the difference between uh, the, the involution and the tube. It is uh, more easily seen from this uh, orientation double cover perspective. So uh, client QTFT, a two-dimensional client QTFT uh, with values in a commutative uh, ring is a sym symmetric monoidal functor from uh, the unoriented un category into R modules or equivalently from the uh, symmetric cobordism category. These, uh, uh, they, they were introduced by uh, Nathan Zone and uh, uh, in, in particular studied in the, the thesis of uh, Christopher Brown. What uh, happens is that um, a client QTFT is in fact equivalent to a Frobenius algebra uh, together with two uh, extra structures. One is uh, an involutive uh, anti automorphism omega, uh, and uh, the other one is uh, an element in the algebra uh, which uh, satisfy uh, two uh, relations. Uh, the first one says that uh, the evolution acts trivially on the product of uh, this new element with any element in the algebra. And the second one says that the square of uh, this special element uh, is uh, expressed uh, uh, in terms of the uh, in terms of uh, the co-product uh, uh, 
we take the uh, decomposition of the co-product and uh, we have the product of, uh, of ice with uh, uh, the involution applied to the beta ice. Uh, so this, uh, uh, the omega corresponds to the involution and uh, this element corresponds to the cross cut. These uh, two uh, relations that, uh, uh, that uh, are depicted in here, uh, they correspond simply to a different way of decomposing a cobordism. So in particular here, we will see that we can represent the Klein bottle as uh, the sum of uh, to uh, 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 real projective uh, planes, or as uh, the usual uh, twist of a, of a cylinder. And uh, translating this uh, in terms of uh, 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 this Frobenius algebra structure, we will see precisely these two relations. Uh, what is uh, very nice when uh, one has a, a, a T50 is that uh, in, in the semi-simple case, they are completely determined by uh, the structure constants. So uh, the structure constants, they are just the, uh, so if we have a semi-simple uh, theory, this means that we have uh, an idempotent basis that uh, I call zero. And the coefficients of the co-product uh, lambda rho are called the structure constants. And the semi-simple TQFT is completely determined uh, by these numbers. Uh, when we study uh, a Klein or uh, unoriented uh, TQFT, uh, then we, in addition, need to understand the involution and uh, the cross of the special element. So what happens in this case is that the involution will define an involution in fact on the on the idempotent basis, and uh, so uh, we will have uh, to every element uh, zero there will be a corresponding element zero at uh, star. So uh, if euro are the coefficients of the cross cut, then they are the square roots of the of the structure constants when. Uh, rho is equal to uh, 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 rho star, and they are zero otherwise. And uh, the, the theory, uh, the, the semi-symbol theory uh, in, the, in the unoriented case, similarly to before, it is completely determined only by these, uh, these uh, numbers, euro. So if we have a closed symmetric surface of genus G, which we consider as a morphism in, the, in this uh, uh, category, uh, from the ground ring to the ground ring, then uh, the, the client UKFT associate a uh, number to, to this um, symmetric surface that is completely expressed only in terms of uh, the coefficients euro. So, but because we, uh, what we are interested in is uh, studying the ground wooden theory of a total space of a bundle over a symmetric surface, uh, we, uh, we need to consider uh, a, a larger category uh, where we will not only consider uh, the morphisms uh, coming uh, from uh, uh, cobordisms, but we will include a complex line bundle which is trivialized over the boundaries. So this new additional data is completely determined up to uh, isomorphism by the Euler class of this bundle. And so the generators of this uh, theory are the same as before, but we need to be able to uh, increase uh, the uh, Euler number or decrease it. And so we need to consider two more uh, generators depicted here. So we will consider a symmetric monoid of functor uh, uh, defined on this category. And uh, this theory, again, in, uh, is uh, determined um, by the, the level zero theory, where the, uh, these uh, bundles are completely trivial. 
uh, together with uh, the value that the uh, defunct are associated to the new generators. And as before, if the theory is semi-simple, we have a very nice expression, a close expression that we will obtain for any close symmetric uh, genus G surface together with uh, a line bundle. Uh, we have uh, a close solution that is given by the coefficients of the cross cap and the uh, eigenvalues of these uh, operators, uh, new operators that come from uh, the new generators. But the formula is uh, just given in, in this simple form. So uh, what happens is that the real Gromov-Witten theory, the local Gromov-Witten theory, uh, will define uh, a, a client QKFT on this enlarged category. So how do we define uh, this functor? The, uh, the value of the functor on, on, uh, on a simple object that is given by uh, disjoint union of two circles uh, will be just um, uh, a direct sum uh, uh, where the, the bases are uh, 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 enumerated by uh, the, the compositions um, of uh, uh, the degree D, uh, partitions of the degree D. And so uh, a cobordism to a cobordism uh, in the symmetric uh, category from n copies of the uh, this uh, simple object to n copies of them, we will associate a morphism uh, so that uh, on, on the on a basis element, uh, we will consider the partition function, uh, the disconnected uh, generating function of the real gram with invariance uh, with target uh, space uh, uh, bay, uh, com coming from uh, a genus G surface uh, together with uh, complex line bundle L. And uh, this will be the ramification profiles uh, that are uh, uh, required from the maps. So this, uh, this theory is in fact a semi-simple theory. And uh, the reason for this is that uh, really the, the level zero theory corresponds to uh, uh, real Hurwitz numbers. And it is uh, well known that uh, Hurwitz uh, theory uh, forms, uh, it is, I think, the, the, the first uh, basic example of a semi simple theory uh, where the idempotent basis is given uh, by uh, this expression. So, uh, one, uh, we can then compute um, uh, the involution and the cross cap. Uh, and this uh, will allow us to uh, completely solve the theory uh, in this case. So uh, the, the, the involution is, uh, is very simple. Uh, it, it, on the idempotent basis, uh, it just uh, takes uh, uh, a, basis, a base element uh, that correspond to uh, uh, irreducible representation to the basis element that correspond to uh, the conjugate irreducible representation. Uh, the computation of the cross cap is uh, much more involved. Uh, it uh, uses uh, uh, what we call a signed Fabian Schur indicator, which can recognize uh, the self conjugate representations. And uh, this particular, uh, particularly nice expression uh, written in here uh, comes uh, from uh, using. Uh, uh, via formula for uh, BN, and in particular the uh, uh, equality identity that uh, I've written in here. And uh, so uh, having uh, the expression for the, the cross cap, we are then uh, able to uh, completely solve uh, this theory and uh, to um, in the Calabi-Yau case, this means that in, in this case, the line bundle is of degree G minus uh, one. The, the solution uh, for the uh, disconnected count is given uh, using uh, this uh, simple formula uh, that is uh, a sum um, over self-conjugate representations. Uh, uh, and uh, the 
the sign in here is uh, given by uh, the degree minus the uh, number uh, on the main diagonal of the Young diagram uh, corresponding to, to the uh, representation. So this, uh, this uh, expression then allows us to uh, match uh, uh, the computation with the computation uh, obtained by uh, Bouchard, Flori, and Marino for the partition function of the uh, SO uh, transcendence theory on uh, uh, S3. And this, uh, this was uh, one of the uh, connections that, that I mentioned earlier, and that uh, the real gram of theory is expected to be related to uh, 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 SO uh, uh, transcendence theory. Uh, so this is uh, not, uh, uh, this does not show how and why they are related. It is just a computation on the two sides that uh, we can show that, uh, uh, that uh, matches. And uh, uh, another uh, formula that we obtain from this expression is uh, effectively by uh, taking the logarithm, looking at the uh, connected uh, accounts. Uh, and uh, in this case, uh, we uh, obtain from uh, the previous expression uh, what is uh, called uh, the uh, real Gopukumovafa formula. It was uh, proposed by Johannes Walscher, and this is the local version uh, of uh, this formula. So it says that the connected uh, real Gromov Witten invariants can be expressed uh, uh, using another set of invariants that are called uh, BPS states. Uh, and uh, the, the difference is that the, the real gram of it invariants, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, they are rational numbers, whereas uh, these uh, uh, new invariants, they are in fact integers. And so uh, uh, this is uh, again uh, in the work with uh, uh, Eleni Yonel. Uh, we in fact show that uh, uh, indeed, in the real case, we have uh, su such expressions, and these numbers, uh, they are also uh, equal module to uh, the complex uh, BPS states. That is, uh, 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 I, it, uh, I think, uh, is again, gives evidence that uh, these numbers really uh, are the counts of uh, uh, certain objects that we uh, don't understand very well. Uh, so I uh, will stop here and I thank you for the attention. Thank you very much, Penka, for this nice talk um, about aspects of real Gromwitten theory and uh, also it's maybe generalizations and so on, Gupta Kumbhafa stuff. So with that, we conclude. So thank you very much.